everybody, Ed Homewood, Old Guy Hi-Fi channel. Hope everyone's doing well today. Today I thought I'd do a review of the Gishelli Labs J3 Pro in conjunction with kind of a review of the, the Gishelli Labs J2S. And the reason is, is I've had this longer and this is brand new and I just got it last week. The good news is they share an awful lot in common. Both are socketed boards, so you can do op-amp swaps. Both use the AK4499 EXEQ plus AK4191 companion chipset for D-to-A conversion. The difference is with the J3, we have directly accessible inputs on the unit rather than the little kind of, when you get used to it really quick, the little layout of LEDs and pushing in which flashes and which doesn't, just to indicate your inputs. Once you get used to it, it's really simple. Um, so they're very similar in that regard. They have the same basic layout internally, but Gino redesigned the board on this to accommodate Andrew Sparko's big 2590 dual op amp chips. Now you need to accommodate three of these, one for single-ended and two for balanced. Um, and Andrew was kind enough to send me two of these to test. So by when he had to redesign the board, he did a couple other quick things. He redesigned the internal power supply. He put in an upgraded oscillator clock for better timing and accuracy. And on the USB board, when it doesn't sense a signal, because remember USB is bi-directional, it shuts itself off so that it's not drawing any power or potentially creating any noise in the circuit, thereby lowering the noise floor. And obviously that's very, very important when you're handling delicate signals like a digital signal. So I tried, I had this one for, I probably had it for eight weeks now or so. And in a previous video talking about don't chasing the DAC chip, I had mentioned that there was a new chip set that was starting to change my mind. And it was based on my extensive listening of this unit. Now, I listened to both units with the stock TI op amps on single-ended and balanced. I listened to the J2S with the 3602, excuse me, yeah, 3602 in the single-ended side, and I swapped in a Burson V7 Vivid as well. So I listened to it extensively with both of those. This one's a little better. This one's got a really nice sound to it, though, I must say. So there's no winner here. They're both excellent. Now, I also, once Andrew sent me the big one, the 25, 2590, I was able to get that in on the single-ended side of the J2 because there was enough room. Now, I've heard from some of my viewers that if you get the risers, you can get two of these on the J2. I don't know. I haven't looked at it yet, and I'm not sure I'm going to mess with it. But anyway, so I had, Andrew sent me two of these, so I was able to listen to this with either the 3602 or the V7 Vivid or the stock Texas Instruments op amps on single-ended and then two of these on balanced as well as the stock Texas Instruments on the balanced side. And I did the same here with the J2S. So it is really, really interesting. And again, as I'd mentioned in another video, there was a chipset that was causing me to rethink. I'm not a big Delta Sigma guy. I tend to be a multi-bit or a ladder DAC guy, and that's most of what I've had. Uh, my reference stack is a uh, modified shit Bifrost multi-bit. So um, I'm, I'm more in favor of those than I am traditional Delta Sigma. For me, traditional Delta Sigma, especially ESS chips, have a digital sheen to them uh, a bit more than the old style AKM chips. And I think there is a big difference. And I'm going to do a deep dive on this chipset versus other chipsets, but it's not this video. Um, but I really kind of want to go over a couple of quick technical things about the chipset Gino's using in these because I think it's significant. So the AK4499EXEQ plus the AK4191 is a hybrid chipset. It is a combination of digital or Delta Sigma plus multi-bit techniques. So I think that makes it really compelling. So basically the 4191 is the first chip in the series and that takes the incoming ones and zeros. And I'm going to read from a script because I don't have a great memory. And that actually takes the incoming signals and it does its noise shaping and digital signal processing and noise reduction on the ones and zeros prior to it getting to the 4499 chipset. Now, the 4499 chipset is actually a switched resistor, and that might sound familiar to some of you. It is not a ladder deck, but switched resistor is far closer to a traditional multi-bit on a single chip uh, digital analog conversion, which has been in you know use since the original very first machines. 
Um, I had my first multi-bit DAC uh, back in 1988 with a Marantz CDA94 standalone DAC. So by using the switch resistor method, it's really it's excellent at doing high resolution. It is also excellent at oversampling should you have the need to and or a high res file is coming in and being decoded. So here are the basic things. The benefits of the hybrid approach over, now, the AK4499 EXEQ plus the AK4191 are current base devices. Now, most, their biggest competitor, right, is a voltage-based device. Now, voltage-based devices, and again, I'm going to do a deep dive on this, voltage-based devices are far more susceptible to noise, but they can be really tiny chips. They're not very expensive to implement, and that's a big part of it. That's why you see so many of that brand of chip uh, in so many different devices all the way down to $80. I've got an $80 DAC in right now for review that uses one of those chips in it. And the chips are tiny. If you look at the chips on this, they're much larger because they're current-based. Well, as we all know, Music is basically current. It's alternating current from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So I think that has a big impact on the sonic quality. So again, the uh, benefits of the hybrid approach are high resolution, combining delta signal modulation with multi-bit and switch resistor techniques allows the chipset to achieve very high resolution, capturing fine detail in the audio signal. Now, this is all part of AKM's Velvet Sound technology, and it is amazing what they're doing with it. And there's going to be obviously more products to come from this. Um, it is low noise and distortion. Again, it, because it's current based, current is less susceptible to noise than voltage. So think of it this way. If you've ever touched one, of, I think it's a Van de Graaff generator, you touch it and your hair stands on end, and you've got hundreds of thousands of volts passing through your body, but you don't die. That's because it's all voltage and no current. Well, with current, if you had 100 volts and 100 amps, it'd probably kill you right on the spot. So current is like torque in a motor. It's the workload. It's the thing that does, that actually does the work is current. So I think that's really interesting. So current is less susceptible to noise. And so noise shaping capabilities of this, of this combination combined with the accuracy of the multi-bit processing results in low noise, low distortion. And obviously that's very important for high quality audio reproduction. And I agree. It also is versatile. The hybrid approach ensures that the DAC can handle a wide range of audio signals with varying levels of capacity and dynamic range, making it suitable for high-end, uh, obviously high-end audio uh, applications. So it is, it leverages the benefits of both uh, Delta Sigma and multi-bit uh, and obviously delivers superior performance. And it really does. And I think the difference in sound now, most of the time, and uh, when I hear that competitors chips, then they can be very good. Don't get me wrong. Um, there are some excellent DACs out there that use those. They're just not to my taste. They have this kind of, and I'm going to obviously expose myself here. They have this traditional saber glare to them. Um, and they hot in the upper mid range and, and upper frequencies. And it's not necessarily additional detail. It's just more energy. Um, I also think that they're a little thin through the mid range and bass they do okay, but they don't. It's not as super articulate or as well-defined as many ladder DACs or multi-bit DACs are. And that's the thing with this is there throughout the entire frequency range, it is natural. It's neutral. It sounds amazing. It resolves amazing amount of detail. Um, it is very natural in the mid-range with the human voice, just absolutely beautiful with the human voice. It digs deep. Bass is articulate. It's very fast. And again, I think that's because it's current based. It's very fast. It's very textured. There's a lot of nuance in the entire frequency range. If there's, if there's some fine detail in the music, you're going to get it. And that's what I think is amazing. A tremendous sense of air on the top end, uh, great room presence, which is a big deal for me. Um, it is uh, smooth without being rolled off, but without a loss of detail. It's not strident like other decks can be. So it is really a game changer. It has got me rethinking my love affair with my bit or my Bifrost multi bit. Um, these are amazing decks. It really is. And the fact that they're, they cost what they do, and I'll put the cost for both of them down in the screen here uh, for you to look at. But the fact that they cost as little as they do and they perform as well as they do to me is amazing. Now, Gino Giselli has taken this technology of the AK4499 EXEQ and the AK4199 
4191 combination chipset to probably its most um, extreme level in the uh, Gishelli Labs DAISY DAC. Um, I think that uses multiple uh, chipsets uh, and obviously tons of additional or the option to upgrade to, I think, eight additional or eight new upgradable op amps in it. Um, I've not heard it except at a trade show. Um, maybe someday I'll get a chance to hear it, but uh, that is from all intents and purposes and from what I'm hearing from other YouTube reviewers, the best deck they've ever heard. So th that's amazing. Now, in its price range and for what it is, without any question, these two decks, they really are the best decks I've ever heard. Um, they just resolve all the detail I want. They do it in a way that is just absolutely pleasing. I can sit and listen to them for hours and hours and hours. Now, they sound great out of the box with the standard TI op amps. They honestly do. Very good. Um, if I never swapped out, I'd probably never know the difference. I'd be just as happy. But swapping out the Sparkos 3602 in the single-ended and the Burst and Vivid in the J2 and in the J3 Pro, it does affect the sound. The Burson is a little warmer. There's no loss of detail. It's a little warmer through the mid-range. Um, very good all around. The Sparkle is a little more accurate, a little more detailed, a little more uh, transient decay, just a little bit more extension in the transient decay. So both, there's no winner here. They're both excellent. Now, when you go up to the 2590, things really start to get different. On the single-ended input on the J2, the difference was amazing. There was far more drive to the music. There was far more energy to the music. Um, it had a better presence. It had, and it's a weird word to use, but it sounded more confident. Um, it was just, it was right there and well controlled. Uh, and when I put them in the balanced on the J3 Pro, oh my goodness, it opened up. I mean, it was like, you know, pulling back a curtain. It really was outstanding. All of the fine detail, all of the resolution, the, the speed of it is um, is very good, um, and peaks are, are are not limited, and the transients decay really beautifully, and all of that detail of the decay is apparent there. Now, I use both of these DACs plugged into a couple different systems, uh, into the Freya Plus and the uh, Crimson, or excuse me, the Orchard Audio Star Crimson uh, Ultra DMC 2.5 combination. I also plugged it into uh, the Cambridge Evo 150, and I also ran them into Amaranth's PM74D because I was comparing these against another streamer DAC product, um, which you may have already seen the review or it may be coming out. I don't know when. I film them sometimes out of sequence, so that's the way the reason why. Um, and on the uh, Orchard Audio Freya combination, it was outstanding. Really, really good. Um, it was powerful but i you know a lot of that is that system a, a very high-end system now plugged into the evo 150 it was remarkable now the evo 150 uses an ess dac and it sounds very good on its own but it couldn't hold a candle to the to the sound of these guys um just remarkable um, i played them with um through uh, a pc on usb in running artivana and running title cobuzz and spotify apps in windows i also plugged my uh, CD transport into it. And I also plugged a Cambridge Audio MX N10 streamer into them via optical and or coax for the CD transport and the streamer, just to compare them on those inputs. And uh, no matter what I plugged into it, it sounded remarkable. It sounded very good. Um, the, uh, I don't t haven't done this yet because the channel's still new, but this one's gonna be in the run-in for maybe one of the products of the year kind of awards if I decide to do that. Because who cares, really, right? It's me. So anyway, highly recommended. If I had a, a rating of five stars, these would get 4.5 without any question. They're just, and by the way, I haven't heard of 5.0 yet on anything. So highly recommended, excellent units, great value, very competitively priced and obviously configurable. They can grow with you um, as far as your ability to you know, want to swap op amps and things like that. So Again, just remarkable. Anyway, if you like the video, please give me a like and a subscribe. 80% um, of the folks that watch my videos don't subscribe. And if you guys did, it would so help the channel because the more subscribers I have, the more credibility I have with the audio companies to get product in for review. Obviously, 
so I can have new videos for you guys, maybe exposing you to new products. And certainly I'm having a ball getting this stuff in. So what the heck? So please like, subscribe, comment. Um, as anyone who comments knows, I respond to the comments. I read all the comments. I love the comments. I think it's great that we have that kind of interaction. Um, so I really do appreciate those. In the description of the video are some Amazon affiliate links. You know the whole story about those. And below that are playlists I use for evaluating equipment. I'd love to get your opinion on those as well in the comments. Now, if you want to, and I'd like to put together a community page with your favorite playlist, if you would send it to me, Spotify, Cobuzz, or title, I don't really care. I'm going to put together a community post and list all those playlists anonymously there so that we can all share music. I have viewers from around the world and I would love to know what they're listening to because it's not going to be the same thing that we're used to here in the United States. So I would love to get those playlists. Anyway, that's the, the tail of the tape on this one. Like, subscribe, comment, follow me on Instagram. Thank you guys so very much. I am so grateful for the time you give me. Uh, I am so grateful for all the positive feedback you guys provide me. And it's going to give me a big head at some point, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, this is Ed Holmud, Old Guy Hi-Fi Channel, signing off and saying it's now time for you to go listen to some music. Thank you. Thank you.